our experience is particularly relevant to Japan, to China, to the Republic of Korea, particularly relevant to Myanmar, relevant to Thailand. We had 24 years of occupation by Indonesia, 100,000 to a quarter of a million people died. Some, many, many died of starvation caused by the war, by neglect, by the occupying power, some died of killing. When we achieved freedom, independence, uh, we said, past is past. We have uh, much, much to do to uh, save those who are alive, to look after those who are alive. We honor the victims. We try to help their relatives, those who are alive, those who lost parents, brothers, sisters, cousins, friends. But priority is to look after those who are alive. We have to heal the wounds of a traumatized people, traumatized from the visions of the past, traumatized by their experience, but we also have to heal the wounds with Indonesia. If we want secure borders, if we want to be integrated in the region, to have a normal diplomatic relation with all, uh, to be able to have a, a partnerships, cooperation with uh, the rest of the region, we have uh, to manifest with Indonesia. Indonesia is far too important. But also, we have to understand Indonesia's own challenges after the dictatorship. We became free in 98-99 when Suharto was overthrown by the Indonesian people. So, we say the Indonesian people in overthrowing Suharto, create a condition for us to be free. We would never be free if Suharto would not be overthrown. Who would go to invade Indonesia or East Timor to free us? Look at the situation in Syria today. No one is going to intervene in Syria to free the people of Syria from the Assad regime. Far too complex, delicate. And I totally agree with um, uh, President Obama, uh, the Americans, the Europeans, need to be prudent. You know, you cannot just intervene uh, in a situation where it, you could only exacerbate it for everybody else. So in Timor, Indonesia was the same. So we understood Indonesia's challenge in the post-dictatorship. And so we concentrate in healing the wounds internally. That has been tremendously successful. Shanana Guzman, guerrilla fighter, our leader, prisoner, tremendous moral political authority back then. He was the one who led the whole process and everybody supported it till this very day. The most successful national conciliation and reconciliation with a former adversary, Indonesia. Well, Burmese probably are doing that today. If you look at the way Do Aung San Suu Kyi is conducting herself in relation to the military, uh, her speeches have been always very conciliatory. And she talk about restorative justice, not about retributive justice. She hasn't said a word about trials of, former, of the military. Uh, so that's an example to, uh, uh, for Myanmar. And it is, so the way Indonesia relate to East Timor and the way we relate to Indonesia is a great example of how countries in conflict uh, can overcome uh, the past. I, 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 I will say this, I dare to say, there are no two countries in Asia that have a better relationship than East Timor and Indonesia. For instance, India and Pakistan don't have better relations than East Timor and Indonesia. China, Korea, Japan don't have a better relationship. And I can mention specifically more countries. So, uh, and yet we are very different. Indonesia 250 million, we are a bit over 1 million. Indonesia is uh, the largest uh, country with a Muslim population in the world we are the largest percentage-wise of Catholics in Asia. 
97% Catholic, more than the Philippines, as percentage of population. Uh, we were occupied and uh, 100,000 people died, disappeared. So uh, all the conditions were there for us not to be able to understand each other because we were so different. But no, today we have a fantastic relationship. Government to government, people to people relationship at all levels. But that comes from leadership. Leadership that is credible. You know, if you have a leadership that's not credible, people don't follow. Uh, but Shannon Guzman, myself, and other leaders, we share the same philosophy. So we've been able to have it today Indonesia as our strongest advocate in ASEAN, to join ASEAN by hopefully next year. If we are not joining next year ASEAN, it's not uh, Indonesia's fault, it's our fault. Because we, East Timorese, we a bit uh, have this habit of doing things last minute. We are very good at improvising. We are not good in uh, long-term planning. And uh, so, uh, but the current government is taking it seriously in East Timor. Indonesia is working hard. The foreign minister of Singapore uh, was in Timor a few days ago. He will host a meeting in Singapore with uh, East Timorese officials and others and uh, other ASEAN uh, experts to see how we can uh, accelerate East Timor preparation to join ASEAN by next year or latest 2014.